All right, guys, Dave Max 6 in Las Vegas with Dan the Man, the Mr. Olympia promoter. Uh, second year, Dan, and I'm really glad to be here with you uh, at the Fit Club, the brand-new Fit Club. We're here for a photo shoot with two top uh, Miss Bikini, Bikini Olympia. Uh, it's good to see you, man. It's good to be back. I'll tell you, it's so great to be in Vegas. There's so many great gyms, and uh, these guys over here at the Fit Club have done a great job putting something pretty badass together. Great place to train. It's good to be back in town. It's your first time here? First time at this gym, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dan's getting a little pumped before the, before the shoot over here. He made me wait for a minute. <laughs> Go ahead. Awesome. Go. You walk the walk. So, Dan, um, I want to talk about the Olympia. We're, we're, is it six weeks or seven weeks? Well, we're, we we're about six weeks now. I don't know how long it's going to be when the video airs, but, yeah, we're about six weeks out from the event now, and uh, we have our team in town. There's just so many little pieces of production and planning that go into this year, especially with the unique circumstances of 2020. Um, it's been very challenging. Every single day we're met with a new set of, obstacles and variables that we have to, to manage and uh, it's every Olympia always has its challenges as you can imagine this year has been a whole nother level this is your second year and I gotta say man I have a lot of respect for you because and we did an interview with Jay on, on Skype but this is actually in person and you know last year you didn't have Sean in the show all this thing with, with him this year with the COVID and stuff you are really being tested uh, <laughs> <laughs> to put this thing together this year on top of that we had jake who just bought the olympia uh so it was very important you were telling me off cap for him to actually do the olympia he did not want to reschedule no matter what happened that's why you moved it to december last time you did you weren't even sure i don't think you knew that it was going to happen or you didn't say now we know it's in december uh talk to me a little bit about the challenges uh this year it, how do you keep first of all how do you keep your positivity because every time you post something every time we talk to you it's always it's going to happen you guys we have all kinds of cool stuff how do you stay that way I stay that way because every single day we get dozens and dozens of um, notes and instant messages and emails and texts from fans around the world. And you realize the Olympia means so much to so many people. Um, and it's more than just an event, right? It represents something far more to the global fitness and bodybuilding community. So we just feel like we have to keep positive. We have to focus on the end game. Uh, yeah, this year's Olympia is going to look very, very different than any other Olympia in many ways positive and in many ways not so positive because of the limitations that have been placed on us by the forces that go beyond us you know governors and you know political components and all these things that we can't control but um, we do feel pretty good that we have an owner in Jake who acquired the event back in February and from day one he says no matter what happens even if it means it's at the expense of his bank account we're gonna have this event because we're gonna make sure that we do whatever we have to do to make sure that the most important event of the year is held, that these athletes have a chance to compete for the most prestigious title in the world. And uh, so we're just focused on making that happen in whatever way, shape, or form it has to happen. This year's Olympia will go on in what form is still to be determined, but we're gonna be crowning Olympia champions in December. Well, I gotta say, you got quite of a lineup already. Uh, Rami is doing it. Brandon's returning uh, to defend his title. Phil, he's coming back, which is a huge deal. Unfortunately, Flex is not going to be in it, but you know we should have William Bonac. You told me that possibly we'll even have um, uh, Eddie um, um, Hadi Chupan. So hopefully, he can get his visa. That'd be great to have him. It's going to be a hell of a lineup. Um, uh, who else would you like to have at this point? I mean, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty uh, all star. Dave, this lineup is stacked, um, and it's stacked in all the divisions. You know, you just talked about the return of Phil Heath trying to win the, you know, trying to establish his mark, the all-time record with Lee Haney and Ronnie Coleman. And then of course, Hadi Chupan, we think, we feel pretty good that he's gonna make his way here from Iran. So that's really positive as well. Um, Brandon's trying not to be a one-hit wonder. He's looking really great. He's training over there in Kuwait as we speak. And uh, he's coming back here looking for number two. Um, Dexter Jackson, I know. How can I forget Dexter? We're yeah. going to have three Mr. Olympia champions competing on the same stage in the same night. Very unusual circumstance. And then, you know, right behind us here in this gym, we have two of the top bikini competitors in the world. That bikini Olympia division is stacked. The 212 division um, with Kamal and Derek and a few other contenders is going to be tremendous. Both the men's and women's physique divisions have just blown up. The classic physique division is tremendous. I know Whitney and uh, Adela and Oksana are back to battle for a fitness Olympia title, and we all know how much we love watching them do what they do. And uh, it's just it's just a tremendous, tremendous year. And uh, I know the fans are excited about it. We're going to have a pay-per-view event to make sure that everybody around the world is able to see it. But, uh, yeah, when you start talking about the lineup, that's when we all get really excited because I know you and I came together 
probably 20 years ago because of our love of bodybuilding and our love of uh, watching these battles and watching these guys compete. And this year's event is just going to be so many battles to just um, really get amped up about. It's going to be fun. I mean, obviously, we're all expecting having some restriction as far as how many people will be able to attend. That's already up to you. It's up to the governor. And we're hoping that as we get closer to the show, uh, we'll be allowed more and more people. So it, it remains to be seen. You said we have the, uh, the, um, uh, the pay-per-view, which will be great. But talk about some of the changes, including the venue. I'm hearing this theater is unbelievable. A few changes in the positive. But talk to me about those uh, positive changes. So, of course, everyone knows that our host venue now is the Planet of Hollywood, smack in the middle of the strip. Inside the Planet of Hollywood is the Zappos Theater regarded as one of the top entertainment venues in all of Las Vegas. That's where our Olympia finals will take place. Um, of course, in a perfect world, the theater holds 7,500 people. In a perfect world, we would pack the place, and especially in a year like this, we probably would pack the yeah. place. Because of these circumstances, it's gonna be a significantly smaller crowd. We're just trying to work with local and city officials to find out what that's gonna look like. But just the production things that we're able to do at a theater like that, um, are gonna really take this whole thing to another level. And I think you'll probably see most of that in the years to come, just yeah. because in 2021 and beyond, um, we're gonna be able to do a lot of great things. But uh, I will say this, Jake Wood um, is committed to this thing in ways that you, you wouldn't believe. And he's committed to it for the athletes. Um, we're actually going to be giving away um, a, a record prize money again. And think about that for a second, right? We're gonna give away more money at this year's Olympia than has ever been given away at a bodybuilding contest in spite of a global pandemic, in spite of the fact that we can't sell nearly as many tickets, in spite of the fact that we can't sell nearly as many exhibitors, but we still have the commitment from ownership to go ahead and make sure that the athletes don't pay the price and they have a chance to compete and they have a chance to win big prize money. And that should say all you need to hear about what it means to have Jake Wood owning the Olympia. Well, let's talk about Jake for a second. You guys have known each other for years. He was a big supporter of uh, Digital Muscle uh, for a long time. I remember we worked with him when I was with you. And uh, he's so passionate about bodybuilding. He's been a bodybuilding fan for years. And what is it like to actually work for someone kind of like in the same vein as Joe Weider? It it's got to make a huge difference for you. It, it makes all the difference because, look, we all want to be surrounded by people who we could say, he's one of us or she's one of us. And I think that's the utopia in business, right? You want to be surrounded by like-minded people who wake up every day and breathe it and sleep it and eat it and think about it. And that's Jake. Jake trains. Jake has deep admiration and respect for the athletes. And, and it's kind of funny because typically the owner is the guy who puts a lot of pressure on you and imparts a lot of stress on the team. In Jake's situation, it's actually the opposite. I'm the guy who's always stressing. I'm the guy who's losing my mind. I'm the guy who's probably had a few years taken off of his life through this experience. And Jake is the guy who calms me down. So um, I feel very fortunate to work for Jake, as I do to get to work alongside, you know, Tamer Algindi and Angelica Nebbia and Caden and Martine and Heather and Sophia and our whole team. They're just really a great group. It's a true team effort. and. Uh, we need each other to get through this, for sure. It's a lot of work, but it's not really work either. It's so much fun for you. I mean, I'm sure it's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of work, but yeah. when you love it so much, it's just, it's not the same. We just love it. We yeah. really do, because all you need to do is come to an Olympia. And I, I felt it last year. Fans would come up to me, and these are bucket list items for these fans. These are things that they, a lot of them have waited their whole life to be able to come to an Olympia and experience. Um, the sensory overload that comes with a full-blown Olympia weekend. And um, to be able to witness people experience that, to see how much it means to an athlete who's competed at the Olympia for the first time, to be standing on, on stage next to a guy who is crowned Mr. Olympia for the first time, and to know that his life will never be the same. These are things that are really powerful and they make you appreciate just the importance and the significance of what we're all a part of. And that goes for you, that goes for Jay, that goes for all of us. Like, I never take it for granted and I never lose sight of how much this means to so many people. And I think that's what kind of keeps you, keeps you, you know, moving forward. You know what I think is great also is that I think the fact that you took over that position coming from the other side, coming from the media side, 
for us, and I know I'm talking for Dave Palumbo and all those media artists out there, it's so great because they really feel important. They really feel like you treated them very well last year. You treated them with a lot of respect. You gave them a lot of leeway so they could actually promote the sport, which is all what we, which is what the fans want. So I think it's great that uh, you were on the other side before and you remember that and you were actually, people only had good things to say about that last year. Well, you know, I, it means a lot that you would say that because um, yeah, like I was, I was there. I know what it's like to apply for a press pass and to try to find my little space so you could cover the event and make sure that these stories are put out to the world. And and a lot of times it could be a thankless endeavor. Like not everybody's fortunate like you to get to work with Jay and to get a lot of these folks are out there and they they're they're going into debt to just get there to cover the contest. And they're not tied to places that are really giving them opportunities to earn what they probably should earn. So I like to make sure that that's the one night where if I'm in control of that situation, I'm going to do my part to make sure that they have every chance to cover it and to be a part of it because it's valuable. What the media does is valuable. And um, I remember when I took this position, the first thing I thought about was opportunities to call you and tell you the news. And, you know, you mentioned Dave Palumbo and, you know, my buddy Ron Harris. And you can go up and down the list of all these folks that we've all worked together. And I said, guys, I'm in there now. So... Hopefully it'll change the culture of what that experience is like, but it's um, yeah. it's something that I really I really enjoy, and I, and I think we're look we all came up the same way. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, talk to me a little bit about some of the minor changes as far as the athletes meeting. There's a major change which is going to be like reminiscing of the old school. You want to? I mean, it's kind of stupid. Are you but referring to the press conference? Yes. Okay, so the press conference. Yeah, what we're going to do this year is we're going to go back to the days where the athletes. Remember years ago, the athletes would show up in custom suits yeah. or whatever style they wanted to bring. Well, we went to the track suits for a while, which is great because we love the track suits. For years. And by the way, Nebia makes a great track suit, and we're, we're honored to have that partnership. And you'll see the guys walking around all weekend in the track suits. But on that tr on that press conference stage, we're actually going to mix it up this year, and we're going to let the athletes um, dress the way they want to dress. And you're going to get to see guys like um, you're going to get to see guys like Phil and and um, you know. Brandon and, 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 and Hadi show up in their own style, whether, whether they want to express their own culture, their own fashion sense, whatever it is. So that'll be a fun way to kind of, yeah. we're, we're trying to do everything we can to give things a slightly different look and feel. And sometimes it's just little things like that, that you walk into the room and you say, this doesn't look the same as it did last year and the year before and the year before. We spent 15 years at the Orleans Hotel. And, um, and by the way, nothing but good things to say about the Orleans. They're great people. But it was time to shake things up and to give things a fresh look. So, um, yeah, that's one little thing that we're going to be doing. And, you know, if we're given the freedom to, to do a lot of things, you're going to see more of, of things yeah. like that. So. Well, I'm really excited for this show. I can't wait for it. I hope I, had, I get to go. Uh, I'm not expecting to go. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can, but I understand that there's a limitation and everything. So we're hoping we'll be there. I'm sure Jay will be, and uh, it's going to be a great show. You did a lot of work, and I, I, I tip my hat off to you. Well, I think it's going to be awesome. I want to just add, since this is Jay Cutler TV, yeah. I got to tell you, and I mean this sincerely, uh, and I told Jay this by text this morning because he, you know, he stopped by last night, and we got to spend a little time together. Jay means so much to me. Jay is so important to how um, I approach this sport. He's always there with wisdom. He's always there with advice. Uh, I always say that my journey through this sport sort of mirrors his. We kind of came into this at the same time, obviously doing very different things. He took over the world as a competitor, and, you know, I was doing other things. But in the case of Jay, it just he's so he means so much to this sport. And I know he's gone on. He's had great success in other things, uh, in, in investments and business projects, and he's had extraordinary success. And he's really sort of the gold standard for how you should carry yourself, you know, in your post-competitive life. Um, but I'm so glad that he stayed close to the sport. He does not need bodybuilding anymore. He's fine. Jay could never work again, and he has no problem with that, and he'll live the rest of his life on yachts and in Bentleys. He does not need this. <laughs> but the reality is, even though he doesn't need it, he still stays close, and we have so much love and admiration and respect for Jay, so um, I, just, uh, I just hope it's important that everybody appreciates J uh, Jay's ongoing sort of ambassador component um, to the Olympia, to the sport, uh, to me, and to all of us who love bodybuilding. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has to do it because he loves it. Yeah. What else would he do without it? 
I think something within this lineup would be missing, I think. I think you're right. What what the hell else is he going to do, right? (laughs) Exactly. All right, Dan, thank you so much for coming on JTV. Live this time, not via Skype, which I hate Skype. I hate Skype. This is much better in person. This is fun. (laughs) Especially after being freaking locked down for six (laughs) months. It's nice to get out there. and we can touch. Absolutely. Well, Dave, keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you so much. So six weeks out from the Olympia. Uh, give the site, of course, MrOlympia.com. Yeah, MrOlympia.com. And by the way, we're doing big with the Olympia merchandise. So um, yeah, that's cool. there's there's new jackets. You can buy that. And, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can. We've really blown that up in a big way. So if you guys want to get in on some of the Olympia apparel, go to MrOlympia.com. Um, and of course, you update it all the time. So as you know more what's going on regarding the rules, that will be updated on the site, I'm sure. There's going to be lots of updates yeah, in the okay. next few days. Some will be great updates. Some might be concerning. Yeah. But we're going to try to do our best to keep the public as informed as possible, just so everybody can plan accordingly. Okay. And then on Instagram, it's uh, Mr. Olympia LLC, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, there you yeah. go. We'll put and, that in there. Uh, yeah, you guys, give me a shout out. You know, uh, Dan Solomon, official on yeah. Instagram. And I try to do a little bit better this year to communicate and keep you everybody. You didn't even have an Instagram before. I did. And I just joined Instagram <laughs> like a year ago. And I'm, I'm trying to get my social media skills aren't as good as yours are, but I'm doing the best that I can. But yeah, definitely reach out, DM me. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, we'll do our part to, to get back to you guys. All right. Dave Mad Max 6 with Dan Solomon, six weeks out from the 2020 Olympia. Be there either in person or via uh, pay-per-view. And we're out.